Hello, welcome back to PlayStation Access. My name is Dave, and I'm joined today by Rob. Hello, Dave. And Rob, um, this is Agents of Mayhem. Yes. Uh, more specifically, this is five reasons that you should care about Agents of Mayhem. And I've started straight away with number one, which is um, this really cool sort of Saturday morning cartoon I was style. I say, I, didn't, I had no idea that this was a thing. So the, obviously this isn't gameplay, but this is like there are... Uh, the game is split into episodes, and you get these really cool... Um, Reminds me of watching Captain Planet and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles on a Saturday morning. Exactly. Already. I mean, uh, it just made me really smile in like a nice nostalgic way. I thought I thought it was brilliantly well done. It um, really sets the tone. It just really suits the game really well. It kind of immediately lets you know the kind of game you're going to be playing. It's a bit tongue-in-cheek. It's a bit over the top. It's, you know, um, it's got really sort of larger-than-life characters um, with loads of sort of stereotypes and I stuff would not in a expect good way. anything less well absolutely from um, this game and I think actually that I went into the to uh, playing this game I, I didn't know very much about Agents of Mayhem I thought it was maybe going to be a little bit of a a Saints Row uh, what's the I don't know how to say it sort of a rip off I guess homage uh, a homage that's the way to put it and I felt actually it wasn't like that at all um, it was uh it was co- totally different as I'll try to explain as we move on to number two uh, that was which cool which is twirly jump in midair yeah twirly jump in midair not number two actually it's actually character switch on the fly right so you can see that uh, at the bottom right of the screen there were three character portraits yes uh, so in Agents of Mayhem you have a squad of three at any one time uh, although there are many agents to choose from which will come on f- to but once you've, you know, at the start of a mission, you, you sort out your squad of three, and then you are free to change between them on the fly, uh, which is uh, really, really cool because they're all very different. They all have different skills. They all have different weapons. They all have different strengths and weaknesses. Is this single player, Dave? This is single player. So uh, in a, it's about knowing what their strengths and weaknesses are. Like, that's how to be good at the game. That's the, the game, that you know, that's where it shines is using... The appropriate character at the appropriate time. So uh, you know, I've got um, this is Fortune. She's quite um, she's quite nippy. She's really good with shields. She takes down shields really well, and she can stun enemies, uh, which uh, makes them easier to take down. And is there like a massive one with a big gun? What this guy? <laughs> I saw like I knew that was. I didn't. I didn't actually know that cut was coming. Hard tack uh, is my favourite actually, and he's yeah, he's got a huge shotgun. And he's got a big burly beard, and I like him very much. Is there like a nippy sniper? Well, how? What are the chances? You gotta stop doing <laughs> this. It's like, your, it's like your magic trick. <laughs> this is Rama, uh, who's actually the first uh, agent you unlock. As in, you start with the three we just saw, and then you move on to Rama. Uh, this is Hollywood. He's the other one. Um, and uh, yeah, they each have their own kind of weapon. So Rama has a bow and arrow, which makes a very ac- accurate. Hollywood's got a machine gun. And they each have a special ability. Uh, so we're going to see some of them now. Hollywood uh, has a, a grenade that he launches from his torso area. Wow. I'm going to say. That was like a, a massive explosion. It was. Yeah, it was a bit over the top. I mean, that's his thing. He's meant to be, I think, out of movies. Um, Is that why it's called Hollywood? Yeah, I thought, good point. Ah. Makes sense. Hardtack has got this uh, tele harpoon, which is cool because. A what, sorry? Tele harpoon. It's a teleportation harpoon. Right. Like that. Um, b- which makes sense because his shotgun doesn't have a lot of range. I'd love to be in the meetings where they where they decide what weapons. To- teleporting harpoon? Imagine what yeah. they turned down. You know? <laughs> How mad did they go without. We've gone too far. We can't do this. Uh, so Fortune uh, has Cannonball, which is sort of like a. A bit like a grenade, I guess, but. Um, but I think it's stunning rather than... Uh, I would did a really bad job of using it here. Just just missed everybody with it. But uh, So everyone has a, a special ability, which is on a cooldown, which you can see at the bottom right hand of the screen. Everybody also has a mayhem ability, which is like a, a super special ability. I see. Which you can use by filling the mayhem bar, uh, which is on the left, which you get by killing loads of people. Um, so this is Fortune. She has a little drone friend who can stun everybody uh, in the area and then it makes them much easier to take down. Um, I think we're going to see hard tacks as well, which is like a a mine that he can fire, that he can choose when to detonate. Here he is now. He definitely is my favourite. That beard's just so cool. Has he only got one eye as well? 
I like just it. Just adds to the badassness. So you just detonate the bomb. You fired the bomb of that bug guy then and detonate it. And I thought it was cool. So every character has a, has a special ability and a mayhem ability. What I'm trying to get onto is point number three, which is right now, which is this game is really, really deep. This is actually point number four. Uh, it's sorry, which is this so game is, deep you've forgotten where you I are in the list. Where I was in the list, I've got carried away, uh, and I'm going to try and explain it. Although it's not easy because there is so much to talk about. So, um, as well as all those things I've already mentioned, there are gadgets. You can have a gadget on your weapon. You can have a gadget uh, just on your person, like agent uh, a passive ability, would. Um, which you un- you unlock just by playing the game. So um, you know. This already adds like a different element to sort of customising your character. So you want to give Hardtack more health. You got a, you can got give a trophy him... there, Dave. I know. Thank you. Yeah, I'm very, very clever. Um, still not a platinum though, is it? And it's a bronze. It's a uh, star. On top of gadgets, you get upgrades. So these are um, where you spend upgrade points. And this is like per agent. So, you know, every agent... You get this for leveling up your agent, so hard attack is level 4, so I've got 4 upgrade points available. And you'll notice that they're not just like health or like, you know, attack. They're not shared um, like skills, so each agent has a different set of uh, 4 um, attributes that you can upgrade right. and do different things. There's also on this last one, you can see there's a squad bonus. Uh, which I thought was really cool because it just it just again is like another way of customizing how you want to play. Um, if you you put points into there, then your squad are all going to benefit. This is the uh, last sort of way of upgrading your character, which I think is great. Which is with uh, upgrade cores, and they are a shared resource. So you can see I have four cores, but if I spend one on hard tack, you know that's going to be one less to spend on any of the other agents. Yeah. So it's different again to like just. XP points um, and I just think it's a really really good system I really enjoyed looking through it and seeing the different options available it kind of became uh, apparent to me how deep you can get into this game putting together a squad for particular kinds of missions knowing that you know like hard tack I think I upgraded his melee uh, his resistance to melee because I knew that you know he's got a shotgun, so he was going to be getting going, going in close. Exactly. There's um. I think I gave Hollywood a dash ability, which uh, meant that every time he dashed, he left behind a grenade. And I just really appreciate that kind of uh, customization. It's a bit carefree with his grenades, isn't he, Hollywood? He is indeed. Look how many agents there are. There are twelve agents. I was going to ask how many agents are there. You've so answered you, my question. You can see them at the top there. So there are twelve agents. Uh, each, as I said, with a different weapon, a different special ability, a different mayhem ability, then all those separate abilities that you can you can upgrade, as well as the like the core abilities. Um, then you're going to you know be uh, uh, per- you're going to be uh, upgrading all of those. It's like really really deep, um, and putting together your squad is going to be uh, I think just a lot of fun. And what's uh, this now? This is just the last point, which is a bit of a sort of catch all to just say it's a really fun open world it doesn't take itself too seriously so we were just looking at all that shooty stuff and now you're saying there's a big open world as well yeah it's set in Seoul um, you have uh, this car there are loads of cars to upgrade You, uh, sorry uh, unlock you can uh, also just steal civilians cars because you know that's, that's the rules isn't it um, you get a triple jump not just a double jump, but a triple jump. This is you calling in the car. Um, every character, <laughs> every character nice. has a, a little you know, way of getting in the car if you stand in the circle. The car has a boost. Um, so, and so you can jump up buildings. You can jump up buildings, but only certain characters can do that. So again, you want to like, you want to uh, kind of string together combinations, you know. So hard tack, he can climb buildings, but Fortune can't. But she can dash through the through midair. That looks great. And so it just really encourages to you to, uh, you know, think about your squad and use them. It's it's not um, it's not a gimmicky gameplay mechanic. I didn't think. I thought it really worked well because, you know, you have to think about it and understand your characters. They're not all just like the same. This is your secret base, which I really enjoyed, with actual gameplay information on the big screen. Excellent. That you can I walk like around and go and you know go and see the R and D department and stuff like that. I like how you've shown me both agents and mayhem in this video, Dave. Well, I that was my aim, Rob, and I'm glad to to hear that I've I've got away with that. Um, so hopefully, I mean that has given you a bit of a, a flavour of agents and mayhem. I, I was really impressed when I played it. 
I wasn't expecting too much from it, and I ended up really, really enjoying it. Um, and I want, I just want to ca to get more of the agents really, and see what different abilities uh, that they have, um, and you know, see how you play with them. So thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, please do like this video if you liked it. Let us know in the comments uh, what you think of Agents of Mayhem. Have you heard of any of the other major uh, agents and what they can do? I'd be interested to hear about it. Uh, and please do subscribe so you don't miss anything else from the world of PlayStation.